morning, guys. Good morning. All right. We're here at our uh, daily JHA meeting. We're going to go over the job specifics that we're fixing to do, the hazards involved with it, as y'all well know, right? So today, we're rebuilding the AAF mass rolls. That's these rolls right here on the table. Uh, we've looked at them. We've discussed them. We're going to get through it in a little bit more detail this morning. So going through my hazards, slips, trips, and falls are the first three hazards on there, right? It's a lot of documentation for those three hazards. So. Andrew, what uh, potential slips, trips, and falls do you see in our area this morning that need to be addressed? Well, I've seen this, this hose. Uh, we've got some oily rags, and, and we've got some dirt on the floor that we need to sweep up before we begin work. So basically, just do a nice, good cleanup before we get started this morning, yes, right? Yes, sir. All right. If you're doing cutoffs, y'all, if you're cutting a, a section of something off and you've got a, a dropping of, of 8 or 10 inches, take it to the dumpster where it belongs. Put it over there in that West Knot Potential Hazard for everybody else in, in the work area, right? All right, y'all. Uh, Took the liberty this morning to look what the temperature is going to be like today. It's going to be around 85 degrees, right? Which is a lot cooler than it has been here in the past. But still, at any given time, I'm asking you now to stay hydrated. Don't start drinking an hour into your into your work day. Start now. You know what I mean? Get hydrated before you go into your work area because when it comes to dehydration, it's a serious injury. And it's a life-changing injury. It, or it can be. Let me let me say that. It can be a life-changing injury. All right, so guys, uh, our next uh, hazard is going to be abrasions. So, Clark, looking at this table this morning, before our work starts, do you see any sharp edges that need to be addressed? Uh, yeah, I do. We've got a stop plate here okay. uh, that our ram is working against, and this is definitely a sharp edge, and we, this needs to be addressed uh, just to make sure that we don't cut our fingers or, uh, or worse. We'll get, we'll get that cleaned up and uh, prepped up before we start work. And uh, just a reminder, make sure that when we're working, we wear all our PPE, cut-resistant gloves, fire protective gloves, face shields, whatever's required. Now, if I'm grinding over there on the table and Andrew's working over beside me, I might want to say, hey, Andrew, you know what? You got a lot of stuff to get done, so do I. We're going to be stuck right here, so maybe both of us need to get a face shield on. You know, try to take out for the guy you're working beside, right? Moving forward to electrical shop. What would be some, some potential electrical issues today that we might run into? Um, if we have any frayed cords, um, any of these power tools, if they're damaged if they have missing ground prongs um, make sure that we're taking them out of service okay all right very well all right our next uh topic is rigging so how many certified or advanced riggers do we have signal persons as well right as i am myself so there is no reason why today any lifting that we do on these rolls or any equipment that we use when it comes to lifting is not going to be done 100 percent properly right because we're trained right. to do it and uh, I think we'll be successful in that. Y'all, the next uh, topic coming up is fire hazards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point those out to you as I walked the area down this morning. You've got paper on the fab area, rags on the fab area. I noticed over there there's a bottle of some type of liquid. It appears to be some type of threading oil or something like that. Those are hazards. As well, if we do any cutting or welding on this table to free any of these rolls up or whatever, there is oxygen and gas bottle rack right there that needs to be moved 25 foot away from our work area. Uh, Clark, can you tell me where the closest uh, fire extinguisher is in this area? Got one right behind you. All right, got one right over here on the column line. I inspected it earlier. It's in good working condition, so everybody knows where it's at. Other than that, besides keeping it clean, I think we can minimize all the fire hazards that, that may come up today just by keeping our area, addressing it and keeping it clean throughout the day. Strains. Y'all know working with heavy stuff like this right here, the majority of the lifting we're going to do with these right here, we use the crane, right? If there's any material that needs to be picked up, if the material weighs over 50 pounds, please get someone to help you with it. Y'all know that um, communication is the next topic. Y'all know that communication is a key, right? It's key on getting your job done. It's a main thing on getting your job done safely, right? So if someone's over here working on the table and, you know, they're going to be swinging a hammer or something to knock something out or whatever, you got another teammate working at the table, what do you say? Hey, man, could you step out of the way just for a minute because I'm just going to have to you know, try to force this, this, this piece to separate. So close quarters, we've covered that topic this morning, but it's listed down here again. Just be mindful of a tight work area and a tight space to work in. Body positioning, if it be from the way you pick something up or what you put yourself in between while you're working or equipment moving around you. Just, you know, you got to have eyes all the way around your head these days. And also be mindful when you're coming in and out of the man doors in this building that the crane is active. It could be active at any given time. So when you come through that door, you need to look up and make sure you know, you know what the situation is around you. 
Damaged tools, like we mentioned, we'll replace them. We will not use them. Damaged equipment, we won't use it. Damaged rigging, we won't use it. Anything damaged, we don't want no part of that. There's no lockout procedures today. If you get in a situation where you need a lockout, if let's just say a uh, machine goes bad, and you've got to lock it out to unplug it, and that certain style of disconnect you have to with a Hubble plug. You've got to lock it out to even disconnect it. So let's just make sure if we have to do something like that, that we do it properly, right? And if that documentation is needed, we'll have to fill out the paperwork for those involved to move forward with it. Uh, section four, our final area in our uh, JHA, uh, permits required. As far as this area today, we don't have any permits required at all. Moving on to uh, mandatory PPE, so we're all to an understanding of what needs to be worn. Hard hat, safety glasses, hearing protection, bed tarsal leather boots, leather gloves, welding gloves, etc. All right. Uh, I've done an inspection this morning on ladders, tools, our work area, PPE, rigging. Uh, I will need to get with Joe to make sure the inspection is done on the crane today. Other than that, I think we've covered everything. The main thing today, guys, is just uh, be mindful about what you're doing, keep a safe work area, and let's just move forward with safety. Today's task. Thank you, gentlemen.